Hello and welcome back carnivores, SB fam. I hope you all are having an amazing day. I would love to know any updates you're willing to share with me. If you are going through any hurdles or issues, feel free to drop a comment down below and let me know what you're struggling with. So today's video, I will be sharing with you my game plan on how I'm going to get back into shape and feel great again. And when I say get back into shape, I do not mean decreasing the number on my scale. I don't even have a scale anymore. I've thrown my scale out years ago. I mean decreasing body fat percentage in my body while increasing muscle mass. You will be seeing me discussing, almost conducting a masterclass with my three coaches to come up with the right customized plan for me and my specific goals. The day that I drop this video will be the first day that I begin this game plan. And as promised, my August 30 day carnivore challenge is now open for sign up and I cannot wait to conquer my birthday month with you. Yes, August is my birthday month. I'm going to make it extra special by featuring the following guest speakers shown on the screen. These are some of my favorite, favorite guest speakers. They are my role models. I learned so much from them. So they will be visiting my community as speakers. Yes, the coaches will continue to teach their fat loss program, the feasting and fasting program. You can just click the link down below in the description box or go to the URL shown on the screen, sbgmeetup.com. So without further ado, let me cut to my roundtable discussion with my guests, Coach Emily, Raymond, and Sally. Hey, coaches. How are you all? Hi, Bella. Hey. Thanks for having us. <laughs> I'm so, so happy, happy to see you. I am too. I want you all to introduce yourselves. So we'll start with Coach Raymond. Yeah. Hi, I'm uh, Coach Raymond. I'm 51 years old, almost six-year carnivore in September. My passion is to get people full carnivore. I really believe that we can actually achieve the weight loss that we want and the health that we want. Of course, it takes learning about yourself. I am willing to teach that and show you the way on that, what I've learned and what I've achieved from it myself. And Coach Emily. Hi, I'm Emily Harvo. I am 52 years old and I've been with Bella for a couple of years now in the Steak and Butter Gang. So this has been an incredible experience getting to do group coaching and one-on-one -on -one coaching. The things that mean the most to me are the healing that people find through doing an all meat diet. And I love to help them layer in fasting as another healing tool. That is what gives me so much encouragement and passion is when I see people conquering their cravings, when I see people having food freedom, and when I see them reaching their absolute best health by combining the healing uh, journey of carnivore with fasting. And Coach Sally. Hey, <laughs> I'm Coach Sally. I am a sugar addiction, binge eating, eating disorder coach <laughs> more than anything. I've used carnivore and fasting to gain control of all of these things and to keep them in perspective. <laughs> the program that we run here, it's a phenomenal program. I've used the priming to heal and to pretty much almost get rid of my Hashimoto. It's almost gone. My hypothyroid's balanced. And I like to help other people that have autoimmune conditions, sugar addiction, any of those things uh, to overcome them and to see the light at the end of the tunnel. When I came back from China, the first thing that I did was get back in touch with my team, including these amazing coaches. And of course, they were super happy to hear from me, but I told them, I'm struggling because when I was in China, I wasn't able to eat clean like I always do. So first concern that I'm kind of struggling with is addiction to cheese. Every time when I eat, I want to reach for cheese. And when I do eat the cheese, I notice that my appetite opens up. How does one kind of recover from four months of nonstop <laughs> eating cheese, yogurt, mm -hmm. processed carnivore foods? I went through that as well. <laughs> for a little while. So mm -hmm. I did come back from it as well. And it, it was difficult because you let go of the fasting, you know, you let go of that and everything that you've let go of, you're trying to flip back around. And with dairy, especially it will create those cravings. It makes it a whole lot more difficult to stay on track or to not jump to something else. Mm -hmm. um, it also messes with the weight you know, and it has um, the lactose in it. It just keeps that addictive part of the brain lit up mm -hmm. and that makes it more difficult to get back on track. But yeah. if you slowly let it go one piece at a time 
and see how you do. Because it is, there's a lot in the mindset with this. You kind of have to redirect on purpose. And sometimes it's it's forced in the beginning when mm-hmm. you've gone in a different direction. Then you got to kind of pull it back. But once you do that, it just all comes flooding back to you and and you end up in a good place. What I'm concerned about though is my taste buds are going to be bored. You know what I mean? Like when when you're eating cheese and things that are packed with seasonings, you're eating that stimulated st- you're getting stimulated, right? Every day I know Raymond you can relate. What happens when you stop it? Like did you get bored and did you not want to eat as much? So for me it took about two weeks for the cravings to kind of die down or start dying down. Mm -hmm. Uh, By the second month, I stopped wanting cheese. So let's, let's remember what they've always said there. There's also a habit that you've actually created in yourself. So there's part habitual that you're, you've got the cheese on. So we have to remember that. So that means there's going to have to be a certain amount of time that you're going to have to go without cheese to get used to that. Yeah. So in my case, it was two months for you. It might be less, you know, Mm -hmm. different people, different things. So that's something to look at. The other thing I want to say is that if you want to slowly wean yourself off and I, and, and, or damage yourself less is have the cheese after you have the meat or as Mm -hmm. a side dish. And that's what I've been doing. I think that it, it comes back to a broader topic too, of foods that are not our best and associating what are the negative symptoms that come with those foods. Yes. And to, so that you make a clear association. And so for me, I, I struggle with cheese and dairy. And so when I look at it, I know I'm not going to feel good. I'm going to get constipation. Mm-hmm. I will get weight gain. Um, and so just to clearly identify the negatives that happen when I eat this food, this happens when then this to make that clear designation, it will help you, Bella. It will help you to put it back into perspective because there there are hyper palatable um, carnivore foods. There absolutely are. There are, yeah, that we can overeat on and that we can, that don't actually tie into our natural sense of satiety. Mm -hmm. So uh, draw those clear negative associations and keep those the forefront in your mind for motivation. Mm -hmm. And also ask yourself, how do I want to feel? And so I feel like this, when I'm eating the cheese, this is how that makes my body feel. What is it that I'm wanting? And when you keep that want of where you're going in front of you, that will help you stay motivated. I would also say to focus on fat. I know you are a beautiful high fat carnivore and the fat helps to unleash those cravings so Mm -hmm. much. So I love that you're choosing your fatty flank and ribs as you go forward. And I love the variety. I've know I, we've watched your plates for quite some time and there's often chicken wings on there too. Yep. And so yep. including some variety and some treats, some different colors, some different textures, that's going to help you with your cheese breakup. Oh my gosh. I love it. <laughs> Just to kind of ride off of what Emily said, I want to be pain-free. That's All right. more than anything, my priority. And I made that very clear in my last video. I'll link it down below. If you missed it, I share my body, my weight gain, and also the pain that I'm dealing with right now. But to recap, I don't want to deal with lower back pain ever again. And when I was in China for the four months, eating cheese every day and yogurt and cured meats, the lower back pain came back immediately. So I do correlate when I eat cheese, dairy, and cured meats, I get back pain. And so this type of uh, association is very clear with, for me. And I love that you noted that, Emily, because when you when you actively think of that and you kind of associate that, you start seeing these foods in a certain light, right? Things kind of became a priority that they never were. For example, me being a 24-7 caretaker for my dad, me seeing my dad suffer and me being in a zone where it was like stress, lots of stress, <laughs> high cortisol. And there were moments where finally I can sit down and take a breath and I feel emotional. I feel sad and I want to eat cheese or I want to take out a cup of yogurt and just kind of like comfort myself, like (sighs) emotional and stress eating, how to deal with it. Your situation, Bella, is actually very difficult because first of all, you were out of your home environment. Second of all, you had all of these stress, all of this, you know, parental stress and just having different people around you alone 
was another level. So it's incredible that you even stayed carnivore on that. You couldn't get the stuff you really needed that you would normally get, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. So you were literally in a foreign <laughs> country in yes. every way possible, right? <laughs> so so what I want to say is, first of all, uh, be actually very uh, proud of yourself to recognize Thank you. that you could see how you felt through this. So there's no way you could have predicted this. You could not have predicted the trip to China and how that would have gone and how to actually make that level better. But what you did is you did look at, look, I'm feeling this way. I'm feeling that way. And hopefully you didn't beat yourself up and saying, oh my God, I cannot believe that I didn't try a little bit harder here and there. Instead, you just like let it through. This is, this is, this is how I'm going to have to go through this. And you did. And I think that's what kept you carnivore. Because if you would have stressed yourself out that much more, you mm -hmm. probably would have went easily went to the car. I'm sure you had plenty of chances to eat with the family oh, carbs, right? So many chances. There were moments where my mom was doing this. Here, eat a dumpling. Right. I thought so. Over and over, right? Yeah. So now, if you had the mindset that you were going to try to keep it perfect and have it really hard, be hard on yourself, yeah. you wouldn't have succeeded. So what you did by being empathetic to yourself, saying, hey, this is the situation that I have. Right. This is the best that I could do. What I'm saying is you actually did it the best way possible. That's what I'm trying to say. Thank you. I couldn't have said that dealing with it any differently than you did would have turned out better because what you did was, in my opinion, the best. So now all we need to do is when you're back in your environment, back in what you know, then we can start repairing, which you're right on it already. Yes. I think I can safely say like starting today, like right now, after this conversation with you guys, we're going to start with the plan and we'll be talking about what, what is the plan, right? I love what Raymond said. Mm -hmm. You did the best that you could do. And Thank in you. that situation and you, and you did fantastic considering, you know, you didn't have what you needed to have. Um, now you're back in your home environment and you might still have those habits. So yeah. It's just a matter of redirection and not using like the foods to get through an emotion, but more like an activity as opposed to food. But I mean, even, even at the start, if you're using carnivore food, like you're all, you're all clean carnivore that you use, it's perfect. It's absolutely perfect. Mm -hmm. But if these things, if these habits tend to linger at all, then you want to focus on just some other activity, something different. And you have plenty to keep you busy. For anyone else listening, it would be like audiobooks and right. walking or working out or crocheting, whatever. But for you, I mean, you've got plenty and yeah, you did phenomenal considering, you know, it, you. it's just amazing. Thank you, Sally. And the, the first one that comes to mind when it comes to what will I do to keep myself occupied when I do have cravings for cheese and yogurt, which are very much still there for me. Uh, for me, the first thing is community. Like I have weekly Zoom yeah. calls with you guys. I see you guys <laughs> like three, four, five times a week with the community members. Obviously, I'm going to be in those meetings, listening in, feeling the love and the camaraderie. With Zoom calls, the beauty of it all, like us doing this right now, is that we can talk to anyone in the world about anything that we need help on. I love it. I think that self-compassion is what kept coming to mind when I was listening to you. And Bella, even you um, describing this, in such detail that is showing awareness that's showing awareness and that's showing courage when we show up to each other and we tell our story we have shown courage and we receive so much compassion understanding it's like we think there's something just terrible it, you know i'm such a bad person that i that i got stuck on cheese again or that i have yeah. cheese or that I this you know and it's just like when we get a chance to actually clearly and vividly describe exactly what happened, what our sensations were, what we were feeling, the more specific that we can be with that, the better. And then to share that with people that you trust and you get to see us and how much we're like, we've been there too. Yep. And how much we're like, we see that you are beautiful and we show you compassion. 
then that helps you to show yourself compassion and it changes the whole environment of what you're doing. And now you have a whole team rooting for you because you chose to share. And that's what we get to do in community. When we share in community, we have, you know, hundreds of people on our team now that are listening to our story and want to hear the next step. And then you have accountability because right. you're going to have the voice of addiction. You're going to have those temptations. It's going to say, oh, I do here. <laughs> yes. Yes. It does not die down. It's there. We know, uh, practically we can help it with priming. We can eat the fat, you know, we can get all that nourishment that that will help it die down, but yeah. you're still going to go through a bit of a desert and a bit of a, where you're going to have to use your boundaries and say that food is not for me. I don't want to feel mm. like that. Yep. So I think that just sharing as uh, specifically as you shared is a huge step forward. Wow. Do you guys feel the love from these humans? They're so <laughs> loving. They're so compassionate. Like I'm trying not to cry right now because I'm just so happy to be back with them. Um, but I think a lot of the audience might be wondering, okay, so Bella, how are you going to do it? Like, what are the concrete steps? I am an abstainer. I don't do moderation well, knowing myself, I need to do cold turkey, just cut it out. So cold turkey and crowd it out. Knowing how you've eaten for all this time, like I a hundred percent recommend that. And then I also think that, you know, a little bit of a, a mini prime, some feasting, like a little bit of just, you know, getting that groundwork because it just neutralizes everything. And I know you eat high fat and your body tolerates that really well. And so getting that foundation is going to be crucial. Okay. Since you said it, I'm going to do a mini prime. I'll do the cold turkey, cut it out. What did you say? Crowd it out? Crowd out. Crowd it's out. called oh. crowding first out. First of all, so. start with eating breakfast okay. first. That's what, going to be your most important. First thing you get up, that's the Got thing it. that you're going to do. Now, let's talk about a little bit about your snacking habits. How bad did it get? Whenever I take breaks, I'm just snacking. I have nothing yeah, better to do. I, I just want to yeah. eat. That's the worst part because that's mm -hmm. where those cheese and those substances really comes in. When you have big meals, that's a whole different story. So a mini prime would be great, just like Emily said, where you're eating three big meals. Okay. Now, just in case oh. you feel snacky for those cheese snacks, don't eat the cheese snacks. Have some uh, chomps, some beef snacks, some a mm -hmm. uh, little bit of fat, whatever. Mm -hmm. So have mm -hmm. something where it's going to make it a little easier on you. And if three days doesn't do it for the, uh, uh, for, or I'm sorry, uh, you could do a micro prime for three days, but mini prime is really a whole week. I advise okay. going the whole week like that. I will do that. You might get tired of it. And when you get tired of it, that's a good sign. Then we're ready to just get to two mats. For those who are new, electrolytes make a world of a difference in energy levels, muscle cramping. So if you're looking for a very high quality, clean electrolyte recommendation, I love Element because of its clean ingredients, specifically this flavored, which is labeled unflavored. So you only get the three electrolytes your body needs, sodium, potassium, and magnesium. This is what the little packets look like. The electrolytes are measured out for you in the right quantities. All you have to do is rip one open, pour it in your beverage of choice, and drink it. You all can get a free sample pack like this one with any purchase as long as you go to the URL, drink lmnt.com slash sbgal. I'll also link it down below in the description box. Understood. So I will opt for the mini prime as opposed to the micro prime because I do want to take my time with this. So it's seven days of priming. Now for my new viewers and new subscribers, if they're wondering what the heck is priming, can we just real quick, just give a recap? Oh, absolutely. So it's the ultimate crowding out. So priming, you are eating three meals a day and you can add snacks as well. And so these are all carnivore foods. And for Bella, hers is going to be a really clean prime. So we are talking meat meat and water only, maybe a little bit of coffee. Now the coffee comes after food, very yes. important. So I think you're back on coffee, right, Bella? Okay. I should address that because I didn't address the coffee in my last video. Thank you for that. I forgot. I am back on coffee guys. So I brought back my guilty pleasure and I am happily enjoying <laughs> black <laughs> coffee, but I will be listening to the coaches and having coffee after breakfast, right? Okay. Yes. What is the purpose of that? That is very, very important. The coffee masks a lot of things. It masks pain mainly. It also masks hunger. Okay. So now that's not quite a problem until it's time for you to eat. You're not eating properly if you've 
your hunger signals all mucked up, right? Yes. So if you're not eating properly and your body mind connection, it, it it's not getting the proper signal, then most people easily under eat during that time. And when it comes time to eat, well, cravings hit first. Yeah. So this helps, you know, in your case, it will be craving for cheese. You know, it's right. easy to grab. You're going to be thinking of that all the time. So yeah. if you're doing that after your meal, you're going to notice something about the meal, especially a nice fatty meat uh, based meal, uh, carnivore meal. Something about that makes you, first of all, want the coffee less. Second of all, it dampens the effect of the coffee. But I'm curious how that's going to affect you because you've never tried it this way, have you? I have never. I always, yeah. my tendency when I drink coffee, first thing in the morning on an empty stomach. Yes. So it is going to be a big discovery to see what happens. Yeah. Oh, I can't wait to journal it with us because that yeah. is our members' hardest task. Okay. I'm right. I do want to add that um, coffee on an empty stomach is really hard on our hormones as well. It's going to be such a great change for you to start with food and have your food first and have your food early in the day. And so that will actually line up. It should probably help with your jet lag yes. it will help your, with your sleep, help you feel more rested. Um, so that's part, that's one part that I'm really excited that you're going to flip around. Me too. How often are you doing coffee, Bella? Oh, every day. I'm not doing the espresso pods anymore. I'm doing like the big pods that are not as intense in caffeine. So I drink that throughout the day. Throughout the day. Oh yeah. gosh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize that. Okay. Throughout the day, <laughs> especially throughout priming, if possible, try not to drink too much coffee in between breakfast and lunch. Your coffee should be about 30 minutes to maximum an hour. Okay. And then after that, leave a little space by lunchtime, which is another couple hours. So you're eating every three hours pretty much. And then you can have another coffee for about an hour if you wanted to. I so add a dessert and you're, okay. you're wanting it to be sort of coupled with that meal time. And so it's right. just right after the meal. Okay. I can definitely do that. With priming it, I was scared. <laughs> not, not horribly because I didn't hear all the stuff that everybody hears before going into it but it's not what everybody thinks. And I ate and I ate and I ate. And I think by the end of the two weeks, I hated everybody. I hated the coaches. I hated meat. You know, I didn't want another bite. But at that point, I knew my body was ready for less. <laughs> and through it, it's like my sugar cravings went away. I mean, the physical sugar cravings were gone because I did priming because I was able to do that, because I got rid of the sugar, the physical sugar cravings, I was able to do everything else. And I succeeded in the program long-term, especially with fasting. And fasting is just effortless now. And I know when you look at it in the beginning, if you hear about like the rolling 48s and all that, you're just like, oh, no, 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 I can't do that. You know, but when you go through the program, especially starting with priming, it's just, it's completely effortless. And you go through each part and it ends up being incredible. And it's a very slow build. It works really well, but I couldn't have done it without priming first. Okay. What I love is for our seasoned carnivores that priming can come back, that mm. this is a power tool that yes. we have these things in life, these emotional experiences, grief, especially as you're, you know, potentially losing your father, you're doing pre-grieving, you're yeah. seeing week. And so I love that we have um, this power tool. Once you learn how to do it and you've done it, I go back to it often, or you can treat, you know, a vacation time is the time to prime, or, you yes. know, there's always a good reason that you can go back and get a little mini prime, get your feet underneath you. And so I really want our seasoned experienced carnivores to learn about this too. And I do kind mm -hmm. of love that we're doing this with you. You are one of the most experienced carnivores I know, Bella. No. And we have that too in our, in our gang and in our meetings is that we have, you know, all different, we've got baby brand new that these yes. concepts are so helpful for brand new to carnivore. And we have folks that have been doing this for years and yes. still get tons of benefit when they try it out. Well, this definitely gives me great anticipation for what's to come. I'm guessing you coaches will put me on some type of fasting routine after my very first week of my mini prime. By the way, these coaches, specifically Coach Raymond and Coach Emily, teach priming and fasting both 
every single week. So one hour for each. And they are so attentive. They are so customizable to each member's hurdles, concerns, and goals. Yes, I'm lucky to have them on call anytime. (laughs) I can call them anytime I want. I'm spoiled. But for any of you watching who kind of want to do this with me, join us in the challenge. I'll make sure to link the upcoming challenge in the description box. I do want to gush a little bit about the transformations and victories we already have celebrated and seen in our members who have completed the fat loss program. I'll put some pictures up on the screen right now of our own members who have changed their lives and their bodies uh, with this program. We have seen women of all ages from 20 all the way to 70 who have seen healing and and body changes through the priming feasting and fasting way. Coaches teach weekly classes on priming and fasting every single Monday and Tuesday, and they help answer your specific questions and troubleshoot your specific hurdles throughout each month's challenge. On top of that, they also give out weekly schedules that lay out each day's eating plan for everyone to easily follow along. So if all of this talk about priming and the future of fasting to come has piqued your interest and you're curious to get started and try it out for yourself, just click on the link down below in the description box or go to the URL shown on the screen, sbgmeetup.com. I will have breakfast, lunch, and dinner, right? Every day for seven days straight. I will have my usual morning coffee after my breakfast as a dessert, correct? Perfect. I wake up at 4.30 a.m. because I am jet lagged still. So should I be eating my breakfast at 4.30 a.m.? Preferably, yes, if you can, the first thing. So it becomes more of a idea of eating for nutrition. You're just kind of, okay, mm-hmm. this is what I'm doing, right? Okay, got it. Because what happens if you wait too long, you're going to want the coffee first. It's just going to happen. True. <laughs> I know it will. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you know, will. my ritual is I wake up at 4.30, I take Simba to the park. And right. guess what I'm doing? I'm playing ball with him, but I'm also... Drinking coffee. coffee. Yes, coffee. exactly. So that's why that's the only reason that I say that you're not going to be hungry. You're never hungry in the morning, right, Bella? No, I'm not. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So it's going to be like you're almost forcing yourself to do that. I look sucks. forward to it. Uh, yeah. I like a challenge. So yeah. exactly. It is a challenge and it's going to be a challenge. So okay. bet it's going to keep you away from that coffee and doing that coffee for dessert by doing that. And it's going to kick your cheese cravings and your yogurt oh, yeah. cravings. It's going to give, you, give mm. you your food freedom and give you your brain back. Oh my God. Good. Good. Yeah. Cause uh, I did priming before you guys know I started yes. off my carnivore journey with six months of priming. Okay. So I have plenty of experience with the priming protocol itself. And I did it for six months only because of my back history If you follow me, you know, I was ex-vegan and I had a whole slew of chronic issues. I healed it all with the six months of priming. Healed my acne. I'll put photos up. It healed my psoriasis, eczema, my binging, gave me food freedom. And it was just an amazing experience overall. It also brought back my period. So I didn't have a cycle for quite a while at the end of my vegan journey. And so my biggest concern was, well, how am I going to have babies if I don't have a cycle? So it brought back my period within two months, carnivore and priming, two months. I was overjoyed. Now, fast forward to right now, I still have my period, but I'm starting to see some issues arise as in my lower back pain is intensified when I had my period for the past four months in China and the amount of water retention that my body kind of like absorbs during my cycle is so noticeable to me. And it makes me feel really self-conscious. So I'll definitely be showing you what I'm dealing with when my cycle comes. So how does one kind of go about that? Like, why do you think that happened? First of all, I think that, um, priming on, uh, carnivore foods and especially when it's meat based, that's why we say when you're priming or when you're taking carnivore in general, in an ideal circumstance, your, your main course is your meat Mm -hmm. and the dairy and the process are kind of like little add-ons on the sides. You didn't have that choice. We got it. You were a hundred percent success. We were so proud of you, but that's just, uh, that changes the hormone component, anything extra additives, preservatives, extra ingredients, 
sugars, mm-hmm. carbs, even those dairies have carbs in them. They are going to fight for the binding or the receptor parts. They're going to uh, not let that hormones flow smoothly. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we get when we're focusing on the meat as the primary source is that the protein and the fats build our hormones strong, give us the cofactors we need, give us the micronutrients that we need for our mental health as well. And so I think that just getting focusing back to that whole meat as the basis is going to really help turn that around. Got it. You were on processed meats, mostly over Mm -hmm. there. You didn't really have nutrient dense meats. Yes, it was carnivore, Mm -hmm. but there is a difference, meaning that these proteins, which, you know, amino acids are essential for human Mm -hmm. beings. So these proteins are lessened. In in other words, these amino acids in the protein are lessened. It's not as dense, nor is it as balanced as say a fresh meat. Mm -hmm. So that makes a huge difference in the amount that you're getting. So in a way, we could almost say, Bella, that during your time in China, you actually went to that point of uh, malnourishment. The processed food I was eating was also filled with salt. You guys know I don't eat salt. Yeah, Um, that's the other thing. (laughs) So it's just so much water retention and the salt doesn't do well with my body. It's a very personal thing that I've experimented with. I just don't do well with salt. So that added another layer of inflammation for me. Uh, And then the spices added yet another one. I don't do well with spices. So biggest thing is if you notice with these nutrient deficient foods that you notice you could eat all day long, but never feel that same satiation. Oh my gosh, you have no idea. My belly right? was like Buddha belly again. Yeah. And yet it's I crazy, was like, right? yeah. And yet I was like, I could eat another packet of cheese. Still hungry. Right. It's right. crazy. Right. Right. I See, felt it for that complete nutrients. Your the body complete nutrient, body. right? Yeah. You really saw the difference between a true nutrient density and one that's void of or mostly void of it. Yeah, that's how you know it's not the proper food for you because you're constantly craving it. Yes. The nutrients in like just the processed stuff, that's what it's going to irritate things. Because I know even for me with the sciatica, Mm -hmm. I know if I go out to eat, if they're using seed oil on the grill, immediately I'll fear it. I'll feel it in my left butt. (laughs) I'm like, oh, crap. Oh, crap. So all the, the ingredients in those foods are absolutely contributing to your pain. Yeah. And I mean, it's just a matter of clearing it out and you'll, you'll get there. Can we talk about stress? How important is stress <laughs> on uh, our weight loss goals, on our healing goals? I want to say with stress, when you are in a high stress, fight or flight, high cortisol state, your body thinks it is in danger. And so it will, I'm um, shut down any processes of smooth metabolism and your metabolism gets into just a hyper uh, triggered kind of a spot and the body will not release fat. It doesn't want to release anything because it thinks it has to hang on to everything. And so it just puts you in a state of mind that you actually cannot have an efficient metabolism. And then if the sleep is getting worse and worse, there's no time to restore. So -hmm. that's what sleep does is it heals when you're sleeping and everything resets and your body gets a chance to rest. Obviously there's a fast when you're sleeping. So that's another kind of healing that happens during that time. So when you're not getting those deep cycles of sleep and you're not getting enough rest, then the body just can't perform as it's going to, it's getting all kinds of mixed signals. And we usually will see weight gain irregardless of what's happening Mm -hmm. with the food that we're going to, the body will gain weight during that period of time. Right. Yeah. I've seen clients, friends, it's like they're doing everything right. And yet they can't get rid of the weight. The weight's not let it go. And they're like, but I'm not stressed. I'm like, did you read your journal? (laughs) You know, it's like the stress level is so important because, and, and like Emily said, with the, the sleep, if you're not getting the sleep that you need, the body's just, it's almost like you're going to bed stressed and then you're not getting enough sleep to make it reverse at all. And yeah. then you're waking up still stressed. Right. And then you continue on with another day. And that will just keep you, it'll keep you in place because your body isn't going to feel safe. Now, Bella, I want to actually ask you this question about the stress. So, mm-hmm. you know, you you know exactly what the carnivore zen feels like, right? You're just mm-hmm. chill, everything. Yeah. Like, even though if there's little stress around you, you still can feel pretty chill, right? 
Yes. So now when you went in China, obviously there was a lot of stress going on, but there was still a moment when you were eating pretty clean that that stress didn't affect you as much as let's say when you were actually in China eating poorly, right? Of course, of course. I don't think I would have came back in one piece if I was eating sugar and carbs. If I ate the dumplings that my mom was trying to force feed me, yeah. I would have fell in the carb hole, really. What's what's interesting is there is a relation with how we eat that can actually stress us out worse. So for example, okay. Bella, if, uh, you know, if if you weren't carnivore so strong, you yeah. would have given into this type of temptation. Of That's what I'm course, trying to say. Of course. You know, I did feel a huge responsibility because I did want to come back and make you guys proud. I did want to come back and report to you all. I was able to stay carnivore and this is how I did it. But with the stress, I'm still, I think, kind of feeling the residuals of the stress. I'm still recovering, I could say. What are your quick tips to manage stress? That mini prime will do it. First of all, just to say with the mini prime and eating the best meats possible, uh, minus the snack ones like the chomps, but that's, and that's still okay. processed, but you know, that's only in case you need it. So you're okay. going to be eating the proper nutrient dense and you're going to feel a sense of even fatigue, tiredness, and then almost like uncaring. You guys remember that when you were priming, right? You're just like, <laughs> I don't care about anything else. Yeah. Nothing seems to affect me. So that actually reduces your stress level down. So I think the mini prime that you're going to go through for that week will actually get you to feel that. I'm curious how your journey is going to be. I know that um, you've been doing a little bit of journaling lately. Like if you can keep right. that up and do some, just kind of uh, getting your feelings out, just, yes. you know, reflection that is going to really right. help you stay grounded. Um, I do really like the idea of plating your food. And so you're going to have your food look really nice and presentable and beautiful. Okay. And so your food is your self-care. When you're priming, you are away from that fight or flight stress. Like you have some time, just take that time to slow down and enjoy your food, enjoy every bite and treat it as um, a special occasion and not just the grab and go. I think a lot of the trauma from what you were going to just had you, it, it mm. reminds me of when I, my three kids were little and they were babies and it's just like, get, you just get whatever you can, you know, yeah, cause no. you never know when the next little crisis is going to happen. Yes. Um, and so it was survival time, but we need to get this message to your body that you're out of fight or flight. You're out of survival. You have everything you need and you are safe and your body will respond and it will get back to a shape that you're going to like more. And, but I really agree and uh, am proud of you for your loving self-loving attitude that you are saying, I don't have a problem that I gained weight. I, you're not comfortable. It's uncomfortable. You want your clothes to fit, but you are a, very accepting of the stage that you're in right now. So you cannot hate yourself. Then you cannot hate yourself mm. to losing mm. weight. You have to love yourself right now, where you are in your, in this current body. Um, and that has to be part of the process. And also part of that process is to take some pictures, to do some progress pictures. And so you can kind uh, of see and accept and give yourself loving messages as you're moving forward through the process. Wow. Yes. And there's some activities you can do as well if you have time, mm -hmm. but um, I usually recommend to get out of your environment. And I know you do that because you take Simba for a walk yes. and if you can get out and at some point get on grass, get on ground with just bare feet because the grounding is going to help your energy level. And the more your energy is at peace, the more that's going to help your whole process mm -hmm. and deep breathing exercises. I think I've mentioned this to you once before, but you breathe in and you hold it for a few seconds and then breathe out. And if you do that, like this is in like in a moment of like panic, just three times in a row. Okay. And it will immediately, you'll feel it. It'll bring your nerves right down. Got it's it. huge at just kind of nipping something in the bud before it goes totally out of whack. Both I of those it. will help. And one more daily habit that I feel like is worth implementing, I personally do it every single day, is wearing blue blockers. These are great to help with unwinding at the end of the day and to prepare our bodies and eyes for a good night's sleep. I love these two blue blockers. I have a clear shade and a red shade. The red one is maximum protection, so I use these evening and nighttime, and the clear ones I use all throughout the day. Our eyes don't become strained and tired at the end of the day, and it aids our bodies in producing more melatonin so that we get a good night's rest. They're comfortable, they sit well 
on my face. Both of these blue blockers are in the same design and I will make sure to link it down below in the description box if you're interested in getting yourself one as well. Actually on the mini prime, I'm kind of curious if you'll get to a point where you're like, oh, meditation might not be so hard after all. <laughs> so. Ah. It yeah, it just slow feels me down very, it slows you down. Exactly. It slows you down. Remember, you're also doing eating before your coffee too. So that makes a yes. big difference. Meditation is very hard when you're on coffee. Let's put it that way. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's hard not. <laughs> well, yeah, it's hard enough when you're not. Right, 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 right. <laughs> right. I'm glad you said that, Sally. Right. <laughs> Well, coaches, I think this is enough for me to kind of work on uh, plenty of homework for me to keep you guys posted on and to document for everyone watching. Uh, if you guys have questions about anything that the coach has covered, maybe about priming that you want to know more about, you can drop a comment down below asking your questions. For the best place to get those questions answered, it is the Steak and Butter Gang, my community, where these coaches shine so bright. Join us anytime. Uh, coaches, I just want to let you guys know that when I see you guys talk about carnivore, when I see you guys coach and even just chat with me and answer my questions, I feel back at home oh, and man. I'm just not, I'm going to try not to cry. But like when I jumped on our very first challenge call and I saw like all of those smiling faces again, yeah. And then you guys coach so beautifully as you always do. I just felt like I'm back home and it just feels so good. Yeah. Bella, Welcome back, Bella. We're winning. so happy for you. It can make you cry. You can see it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I see the tears. <laughs> Is it going to be a cry <laughs> fest? <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's just, it was, it was, I know I'm so glad that you did what you needed to do. I'm so proud of you. And Thank I want you. my daughters to be the kind of daughter that you Aww. were during that time. It was so sweet. Thank and, you. um, but we just, we didn't feel everything felt, um, just, we didn't feel home. And so now that you're back, we, home and our challenges are beautiful and we didn't know what yeah. it was going to be like we didn't know if people were going to want to come again and we have full meetings so much encouragement problem solving everything is just like smoothly getting back to where it needs to be and i'm um, so and i am honored that we can help you that we can help each other I that am. we can you know that we can help you through this process as well so it's an absolute honor thank so you so awesome. much i am honored to be able to help you in any way possible to get you know through where you are to get to where you were and actually beyond that and into where your happy place again this is a really awesome video i think because your your journey of what you went through and we could look at this journey as oh man you know this was a failure let's not talk about it but instead <laughs> this is where the golden you know nugget is for so many people so i actually advise uh you know this is where these are the videos that we need to watch over and over again because we want to know hey how do we get out of our mess in case we do and even for some seasoned people that don't have this problem it's very interesting to walk through your shoes i'm walking through your shoes imagining myself in china what oh. would i do you yeah. know and that's 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 great it's going to give me that empowerment should i decide to travel to which i will eventually some kind of foreign country where it doesn't have access to the meats what am i going to do you know so thank you for actually experimenting this and actually telling us how you're going to get back on your feet and i can't wait to see your results so yeah. that's going to help thank you oh, thank you coaches you know how much i love you guys please please take a minute to follow all three of these wonderful coaches uh, with the links down below i have linked their youtubes their instagrams everywhere you can find them and connect with them and uh, i hope you guys found this video helpful thank you coaches i love you, you got thank this. you bella awesome <laughs> thank, you. thank you all so much for watching this video as promised i will be documenting every step of the way starting today when i begin my mini priming journey just make sure you are subscribed to my channel to not miss my future videos click the subscribe button down below and turn on those bella notifications if any of what the coaches discussed piqued your interest specifically priming and fasting they will be teaching their entire fat loss program 
program starting from how to properly prime all the way to advanced fasting for maximum benefits and body recomposition in our upcoming 30-day carnivore challenge. So I will put these amazing carnivores up on the screen to show you who will be visiting the Steak and Butter Gang Challenge in the upcoming month. You will be able to submit your questions before each live guest Q&A and you will receive the playbacks to all meetings of each challenge so that you can catch up and watch and learn on your own time. Just go to spgmeetup.com as shown on the screen. I will see you all in my next video. Have a beautiful day. SPG out.